This was me a few years ago when I was at my heaviest. I was fat, lazy, unmotivated, and undisciplined. At my heaviest, I was about 187 pounds at 5 foot 7. I ate whatever I wanted without any regard for my diet. I was lifting on and off for many years but was never able to follow a program consistently. Around 2020, I decided to get my shit together and start taking my fitness seriously. I started buying and preparing my own food instead of relying on whatever mum made. I started training consistently and tracked all my workouts to make sure that I would get stronger over time. I made some decent progress for a couple months but nothing amazing. And then the pandemic happened and all gyms closed. Now you might think this is a setback but I wasn't going to let this stop my weight loss journey. So I ordered a pair of gymnastic rings, a pull up bar and a set of parallettes and started putting in the work. We all went into lockdown, so my daily routine was just work, exercise, sleep, repeat. It was a simple routine and it worked. We couldn't go out, so dieting was easy, there were no distractions, I was 100% focused on getting in shape. And after 6 months of consistent hard work, this is what I was able to achieve. Now, I want to share some tips on how I was able to do this. If you're wanting to get in shape, but don't have any fancy equipment or access to a gym, or if you're struggling to stay motivated and stay disciplined and stick to your diet, then this video is for you. If you follow the tips outlined in this video, you'll be able to transform your body, your mind and your life in just six months. In a nutshell, Weight loss is simply calories in versus calories out. If you have less calories in than calories out, then you will lose weight. If you have more calories in than calories out, then you will gain weight. Calories in is what you consume. So the food and drinks that you put in your mouth and swallow. Calories out is what you burn. There are many things that can affect your calories out, including age, gender, the amount of muscle mass you have, genetics, hormones, and your activity level. To calculate your calories out, or also known as your maintenance calories, there are a few calculators that you can use online. They will all give you slightly different numbers, so my advice is to take a few of them and then just take the average. You can find some linked in the description below. To track your calories in, I recommend using the MyFitnessPal app, which allows you to record any foods that you consume and it shows you exactly the calories that are in there so you know exactly how much you're consuming. If you don't already have a digital food scale, you'll need to get one in order to accurately measure your food. To lose weight, all you need to do is ensure that your total amount of calories that you input into MyFitnessPal for the day are below your maintenance calories. Try to aim for a 500 calorie deficit, meaning that your calories in is 500 calories less than your calories out. Calories are made of three different components, proteins, carbs, and fats. The main one that we want to focus on is protein. You wanna try and get at least 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight you have. For example, say you're 165 pounds, you would times 165 by 0 0.8, and that gets you 132 grams of protein per day. If you eat more than that, great, 
that's fine. That's actually a good thing because protein is very satiating, meaning it keeps you fuller for longer. It takes longer to digest compared to carbs or fats. So by all means, go over your protein needs if you can, if you can but try not to go under it. Otherwise you'll risk losing gains. I never fussed too much about trying to hit a specific carb or fat target. I just focused on hitting my protein and hitting my number of calories and I got results that way. If you've ever tried to lose weight and done some research, you've probably heard of a few different diets such as keto or paleo or carnivore or intermittent fasting. There is no single best diet that is the magic formula to help you lose weight. They all work the same way in that they get you to consume less calories than what you're burning. At the end of the day, it all comes down to calories in versus calories out. In my opinion, intermittent fasting is the way to go. Intermittent fasting is a diet in which you restrict the amount of time in which you can eat in a day. A common protocol for intermittent fasting is to fast for 16 hours and then eat for eight hours. So for example, in a 16-8 fast, you would have your first meal at say 12 p.m. and then you wouldn't eat anything after 8 p.m. that same day. So that's an eight hour eating window. And the basic premise of this diet is that it's harder to eat more when you have less time to eat. Intermittent fasting works really well for me because I can easily skip breakfast and not eat for the first five or six hours of the day. And then I get to enjoy two decently sized meals for lunch and dinner, which fill me up. There's also a bunch of other health benefits to fasting, but I won't go into all of that. We're simply using it for the purposes of restricting our calories so we can lose weight. If you're interested in learning the benefits of fasting, I've linked Andrew Huberman's podcast on fasting in the description below. A tip for intermittent fasting is to have black coffee in the morning. Coffee is really good at suppressing your appetite, so if you get hungry in that morning portion of your fast, just have a cup of coffee and that will suppress your hunger for another hour or two. And another bonus of that is caffeine can help you burn extra calories. If you are struggling to skip breakfast altogether, another tip is to progressively overload your intermittent fasting, which means to just try and push back the time that you have your breakfast by an hour and then the next week try and push it back two hours and then the next week three hours and eventually you'll be able to push your first meal back five six hours from when you initially wake up when you're dieting down and restricting your calories you will start to feel hungry an easy way to curb your hunger without going over your calories is to consume lots of high volume low calorie foods vegetables are a very good example of these kinds of foods as they are very filling, but they don't have a lot of calories. This image is an example of how much vegetables can fill up your stomach compared to other foods with the same amount of calories. But of course, you might go insane if you just keep force feeding yourself vegetables all day long. So it's important to try other things as well. One of my personal favorites is popcorn. Popcorn is a very voluminous, high volume, low calorie food. You just have to make sure you're getting the light version because some popcorns uh, they like to add heaps of extra butter on it but if you get the light one we have this one in Australia that's about 300 calories per bag and it's a fucking massive bag with like 15 grams of fiber and a decent amount of protein and for only 300 calories that really fills up your stomach and will keep you full for a while uh, another hack I really like is sugar-free jelly so you know those packets of jelly that you buy in the powder and then you mix it with water and put in the fridge and it solidifies. You can get like zero calorie versions of those. What you can also do is to add some chopped up strawberries inside that liquid before you put it in, into the fridge because strawberries are also very high volume, low calorie. And so adding these two together, you get a super high volume, low calorie snack. And the final cheat code for cutting, and one of my personal favorites, is a chocolate protein lava cake. If you're like me and you like sweets, 
this snack is an absolute game changer. It's delicious as fuck, super low in calories and very high in protein. I'll link some videos in the description below showing how you can easily make this at home. I feel like back in the day, there was this misconception that in order to lose weight, you had to go for lots of runs. If you're like me and you absolutely fucking hate going for runs, Fortunately, there are many other ways you can burn calories without losing your mind. My first tip is to actually find a form of cardio that you enjoy. So I love playing basketball. It's one of my favorite things in life. So I play multiple times a week and for up to several hours at a time. I can easily burn close to a thousand calories each session. And it doesn't even feel like I've done any cardio because I'm just having fun the whole time. My second tip is to go for walks. Personally, I try to get at least 10,000 steps each day. In my opinion, walking is one of the best forms of cardio for losing weight because unlike more intense forms of cardio, walking doesn't increase your appetite while it burns calories. You can also use this time effectively by listening to podcasts or audiobooks. I like to listen to audiobooks while I walk 10,000 steps a day and by using this, I can easily read a book a week. There are also many studies showing how good walking is for your long-term health. A recent study has shown that the number of steps you walk per day is directly correlated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality. The training program that you follow is not that important. There is no perfect routine. There are a million programs out there and they'll all work as long as you stay consistent. So my advice is to find one that is most enjoyable for you and stick with it. Some people like K Bogues on YouTube like training every day with low volume and low intensity, whereas there's other people like Kino Body who like to train only three times a week. Personally, during my transformation, I was doing a calisthenics program, which was a push pull legs split. I used a pull up bar and gymnastic rings to do push and pull exercises. And then for legs, I just did lots of body weight squats and calf raises. The seventh step is to track your progress. There's an old cliche that says, what gets measured gets done. You need to know if what you're doing is working or not, so you can make adjustments if needed. You'll need a digital scale so you can measure yourself every morning. Your weight can fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis, which is why it's important to weigh yourself every day so you can then take the average of your weights for the week. As a general rule, you should try to aim to lose about 1% of your total body weight per week. So if you're 150 pounds, that means you should be trying to lose 1.5 pounds that week. If you're not losing 1%, you can easily adjust your calories up or down to make sure you are. The last step is to just trust the process and stay consistent. There's no secret formula to getting in shape. You already know what you need to do. It's just a matter of sticking with the process, staying consistent, and trusting that you will see results with time. To summarize, getting in shape is simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Maintain a calorie deficit, add in some strength training, do this for a long period of time consistently, and you will see results. Cheers.